amplify DNA, and here we are talking about polymerase chain reaction. Okay, so what we are, it's always important to remember what we're trying to achieve with polymerase chain reaction. We actually start off with a few we, or we assume that we don't have that much DNA, so we've got a few DNA molecules, and we want many identical copies. All right, we just want whatever we start with, we want to make identical copies of that DNA. So if we have one short fragment and one long fragment and one medium sized fragment, we want a hundred or you know millions of short fragments and millions of long fragments and millions of medium sized fragments so it, it's basically just reproducing this each of these fragments on a much larger scale in terms of numbers okay so how do we copy that into that. So basically it's a little machine um, that goes round and round in, in a cycle and the cycle has three stages. So, in so we put our DNA sample, so if this is our reaction tube, whoops, okay so that's our reaction tube and we've got one molecule of DNA. Now in this reaction tube we need to add some other components. If we have DNA and we want to make more copies of the DNA we need a few things. First we need an enzyme called TAC polymerase. It's just a specialized version of DNA polymerase that works at very high temperatures and we'll see why in a bit. Okay, so we need our initial DNA sample in the tube. We need in that tube to also have some TAC polymerase, TAQ polymerase, TAC DNA polymerase. It, it does the job of a regular DNA polymerase, but it, because it works at very high temperatures, okay, and it, it has to be, or it's only found in a, in a few types of bacteria, and so it's, it's got this different name. Okay, now, the other thing that we need if we're going to make new molecules of DNA is free nucleotides, okay? Because that's what DNA is made of. So you need the building blocks in there if you're going to make new strands of DNA. So you're going to need A nucleotide, T nucleotide, lots of C nucleotide, lots of G nucleotide, all of those in there available to complementary base pair with exposed bases just like the process of DNA replication from from last year okay and one other thing that we need and I don't have a different color I feel like I've got oh, a dress on with this now. primers yes okay so and the other thing that we need is primers and we'll also see why that is important Okay, so we've got all those components in there, and the first thing that we do is, first stage, denature, denature. We heat, we heat our tube in the little machine, it just heats it. Basically, you'll see that the PCR machine is nothing more than a little oven that raises and lowers the temperature in cycles. So we denature, so we heat up the mixture to about 90 degrees Celsius. And what this does is it causes the DNA strands to separate from each other. Okay, so hydrogen bonds break, uh, complementary base pairing separates, and the strand, the whole entire strand, separate from each other. Okay, so I'm not writing down those details, but you make sure that you understand that all that stuff is happening. So the strands separate and so we are in now in this situation. 
Okay? So now what we want is the DNA uh, po polymerase to bind and replicate both strands by forming a complementary um, strand for against each one of these. But the problem is that DNA polymerase does not bind single-stranded DNA. Okay. DNA polymerase doesn't bind single-stranded DNA. So that's why the primers are there. That's why the little primer uh, nucleotide or polynucleotides are there. Okay, so primers need to bind. Primers need to bind first, giving the DNA polymerase a little section of double-stranded uh, nucleotide in order to bind to. Okay, and so we achieve this by cooling the mixture. All right, and so this stage is called uh, the annealing stage, the annealing stage where the primers bind. Okay, so second stage, primers bind, primer binds there, primer binds there, and this, when the primers bind, it allows the TAC polymerase to bind. Okay, and remember the little nucleotides are still there. All right, and because the optimum temperature of TAC polymerase, because now it's ready to work, the optimum temperature of TAC polymerase is quite high, and so we raise the temperature to 80 degrees to get the third stage. So the third stage is called the extension stage, where uh, the DNA polymerase is going to extend this um, extend from the primer for onwards. But in order to get this TAC polymerase to work, we need to raise the temperature to TAC polymerase's optimum temperature, which is uh, around 70 to 80 degrees. So 70, we raise the temperature to 70 to 80 degrees, and DNA polymerase or TAC polymerase, DNA polymerase extends the strands, extends the strands by forming the phosphodiester bonds, the phosphodiester bonds between the nucleotides. Let me just show you what's going on there. So, at this point, these free nucleotides are finding their complementary partners, complementary base pairing partners, because the, the bases are exposed on the, se on the separated DNA strands. So the free nucleotides are binding on both strands, Okay, free nucleotides are binding, and then TAC polymerase is just going to go down, connect all of those free nucleotides, not free nucleotides, but connect all the aligned nucleotides by forming phosphodiester bonds. Phosphodiester bonds. And so we've started off with one DNA, double stranded DNA molecule, and now we've got two. We end up with this picture. we end up with this picture where now we've got two DNA molecules, one original and one newly formed strand, just like DNA replication. Okay, and then all that the machine does is take it back to the denature stage, where now for, e for both of these molecules, they're both gonna separate. A new strand will be made on using each strand as a template again, and so we'll end up, after the, after the second cycle, we'll end up with
four molecules of DNA. So each of these is going to separate and a new strand will be made. Annealing happens at around, I'm going to say 50 degrees C, it might be slightly lower. Okay, right, and that is PCR. And it looks like a slow process, but I think after about 20 to 30 cycles, if you keep doubling the amount of DNA at each stage, you're going to end up with millions of copies. Yeah. And that only takes a couple of hours. Okay, so that was PCR. Now that we've got, now that we've made our fragments and we've amplified each fragment so that there's enough of it, now we can separate the fragments based on size. Okay, because remember there's still, all these different fragments are still in a mixture in this tube. So now we want to separate them. 